Hi, it's Dr. Anthony Lavaca, and welcome to our tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Precise Diode Laser, which we use routinely in the practice for several procedures. Typically we use it for troughing for a crown. We also use it for a gingivectomy, and we also use it for a frontectomy. And a lot of times we've been trying that, we've seen, had some great results with utilizing it at a low energy level for some aptus ulcers that patients have on our lips. So what I want to do is tell you a little bit about the machine and then come on over and let me show you how to use it. Okay, so what we're going to do is talk about the basics of the precise diode laser and there are several components to this. Um, what I'd like to do is initially always check to make sure that the unit is plugged in, that the cord is plugged in to the back and that the unit is plugged into the power pack in the wall. A typical problem is when somebody says something's not working, always check the power source first. This, this, this laser is very simple. You have your on off button to your left. You have an emergency stop button. You have the power increase, power decrease, a ready button which is used to connect the wireless foot pedal to. Retract and extend the, the fiber optic cable itself along with an aiming beam and then the size of the beam mode whether it's continuous or non-continuous and then program functions, which we really don't have programmed yet. So what we're gonna do first is initially show you how to set the laser up. The first thing you'd like to do is to have a cleaving instrument to cleave the tip of the fiber optic code from previous patient use. And then we have these disposable uh, caps that go on that slip onto the laser itself so that you can extrude the fiber optic cable on the laser, on the handpiece itself, there's a uh, tightening screw at the back. What you do is you loosen it and then push the fiber optic cable through. I like to have about four to five millimeters of fiber optic cable in front of the disposable tip. Uh, what's great about this laser is as you um, would like to extend it to the patient, always use the extend button, which will allow for the cable to come out and the retract button to retract the fiber optic cable. Um, it's a very expensive cable and if you begin tugging on it like this, it can cause the cable to break or snap and then uh, lead to the cable, uh, the fiber optic cable being inoperable. Okay, so how do we get this baby ready? So what's great about this unit and the precise unit is the fact that it has a, uh, key, uh, a wireless foot pedal. Uh, there's no, no wires connected to the back of the unit, but the way you connect the wireless foot pedal to the unit is to hold down the ready button for about five seconds and then you'll see the check blinking and once it stops blinking your foot pedal is now connected to your your diode laser uh, it's starting off at seven watts so to initialize to initiate the tip of the laser so that it works because the lasers tend to work off a of color we have a cork attached to the side of the unit to press the pedal till you see that the laser is coming through we're going to bump us up to two watts because that's typically what I work with. Turn it on and then you'll see a little plume of smoke and now the tip of the laser is actually initiated. So depending upon what you're doing, I like 1.3 to 1.7 for troughing. I like about 2 to 2.5 for a gingivectomy. Uh, and then a phrenectomy, I sometimes bump it up to about 2.5 um, to 8 and it usually uh, goes right through the tissue. But once again, your power buttons are to the left, up and down. Um, when you're looking at this, there's a continuous mode and a cyclic mode. Uh, you can change to whichever you like. I typically use it in a continuous mode because it cuts and cauterizes tissue. The aiming beam I usually keep down on the smaller end, but what I'd like to demonstrate to you right now is how the aiming beam uh, actually works. So we have a piece of chicken. So we have a nice piece of chicken uh, and what we're going to do is depress the, we're going we're to crank it up a little bit just so you can see the lines in the chicken at 3 watts. Okay. So we have our 3 watts and I'm going to show you the piece of chicken 
And now, uh, doctor, press the button. Okay, so when you do is think it's like a scalpel, you have to use light sweeps to get through the tissue. Notice how that's coming straight through and opening up. So like I said, about three watts for a phrenectomy works out really well. Um, and you can see there's a broader range. Now, if you widen the beam, and go ahead, Doc. If you widen the beam by the aiming button here, and now cut, you'll see it gives it a little bit of a broader stroke and picks up a little more tissue outside of the cutting area. See, so if you, if you think you're gonna cut it once, like cut through and cut, and like a typical blade, it won't work. But as you drag through and through, slowly but surely you get through. And what's nice is you can't tell with the piece of chicken, but it is cauterizing everything around it. So um, that was about five or that was a, several strokes and we're actually through and through the chicken here as a whole. Um, like I said, typically when I'm just going around troughing tissue uh, for utilizing the uh, trios or utilizing um, or trying to make an impression, I'll go down to about 1.7 and depress it on. And I'll change my aiming beam down to a minimal size because now I'm just trying to remove a little bit of tissue around the sulcus of the tooth just so that I can either cauterize a little bit of bleeding to get a dry field for the laser or trying to just increase a little bit of width around the margin of the restoration so that uh, we can have a really good scan or good impression. And as you can see, it's not turning the chicken white but it's actually making a nice little groove and it just takes a little more time. And you really don't want to lose a lot of tissue around the crown. You just want to be able to see the margin of the crown. Once you're finished with the, um, with the unit, the tip typically comes off and that goes into sterilization. You could be, um, you know, a great, you could either cleave the tip now and get it ready for the next, uh, next doctor to use. Um, and then once again, you would use your retract button to retract the cable and extend button if you're going to extend it, but you would like to use this and not pull it in and out and break the fiber optic cable. Also, what's very nice about this unit is that it's magnetic and it keeps everything in one organized place. Once you're finished with the instrument, make sure it's thoroughly wiped down and then shut the instrument off. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this um, educational video from Naperville Dental Specialist regarding the precise uh, diode laser that we utilize in the office routinely. I hope that this helps you uh, understand the equipment that we have here, the state-of-the-art equipment that we have here, and I hope that this video really helped you understand the laser and how it works. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, Dr. Anthony Lavaca, or any of our staff uh, who works with us so that um, you can have a hands-on demonstration uh, on how to utilize the laser. Thank you for watching.